And on the next slide, I have a template. You know, kind of like this should look similar to the atomic orbital template that you used, you know, when you were just doing regular electron configurations with just the one atom. And that's what is right here on each side. So if you look at the black boxes right here, this represents the atomic orbitals of one atom. And then I have one on this side that represents the atomic orbitals of a second atom. And when those atomic orbitals combine, you get these different molecular orbitals that are in blue and green, and I've drawn those up the middle. This is very similar to the diagram that you get in the AP Chemistry textbook. If you don't have the AP Chemistry textbook because you're in pre-AP or honors, then there are some available in my room, but it looks pretty much just like that. So down here, you can see that when the 1s atomic orbitals combine, in the center you can get a sigma bonding orbital that's lower in energy and a sigma antibonding orbital that's higher in energy. Okay, so this one right here, you know, if you have electrons here, they're not going to form a bond. You know, they're, they're not in between those two atomic nuclei. Now, when you combine the 2s, you know, electrons in the 2s orbital, then you're going to get the same thing. You can have a sigma bonding, lower in energy, or a sigma antibonding, higher in energy. Now, when you get to the p up here, and they bond, come together and make these molecular orbitals between those two atoms. Notice the order here. I've put the pi ones, the pi bonding orbitals down here and the sigma here. Now it turns out that for certain molecules, this is the case. The pi bonding molecular orbitals are lower in energy than the sigma. But in other atoms, it's flip-flopped. It's the opposite. The sigma's down here and the pi is on the top, has higher energy. So you really just have to know which molecules you're talking about, but for our purposes, we're always going to use this configuration right here because this is an introductory level. I do not want you to, you know, I want to make it as easy as possible. You need to have some exposure to this before you get into it in college, and that's why I'm doing it. So we're just going to stick with this arrangement. But know that in some molecules, the pi and the sigma could be flipped. All right, so let's do an example. We're going to start out with a, a small molecule like hydrogen. You've already seen what kind of orbitals it makes graphically. So let's start out with hydrogen and fill in this diagram. Now when you're filling in the diagram, remember all the rules apply. The rules, you know, that of electron configuration. Okay, I'm trying to figure out. Let's use orange. They're all different color, so you can see. All right, so if you have hydrogen, two hydrogen atoms bonded together gives you the diatomic hydrogen gas, right? And hydrogen only has one bond, one electron, so it only has one bonding electron. If you have two hydrogen atoms, then you have a total of two electrons to bond. So each one, I'm going to put one hydrogen atom over here. Remember that one electron is in this 1s orbital. Right, I should have drawn that one electron, that it has one electron. And then the other electron from hydrogen is over here. Okay, one electron, and I'm going to put it in the 1s orbital like that. So molecular orbital theory says that if you have two atomic orbitals, then you get two molecular orbitals, one bonding and one antibonding. And so you just, you have a total of two, so you start applying the rules. One goes in here, up, and then down for opposite spin. So since both of these are down here in this 
sigma bonding orbital, this predicts that you're going to have a stable bond between the two hydrogen atoms. Now, there's no antibonding electrons up here, not any. And there's something that um, chemists and physicists use that's called bond order. And the bond order can tell you what kind of bond exists between those two atoms. And it is defined as the number of bonding electrons minus the number of anti bonding electrons okay now that's subtract right there that's subtract I just have room to write it and then once you subtract that you're going to divide that number by 2 so here I have 2 bonding electrons and I have zero anti-bonding electrons and when I divide 2 minus 0 and divide by 2 I get 1 so there should be a single bond between those two hydrogen atoms like that and you will notice that this looks like its Lewis structure. And so molecular orbital theory doesn't really contradict any of the other ones. It's just a more detailed explanation based upon the energies that those electrons have when they bond, the energies that they have in this bond. Okay, so that's a very simple molecule. That's of hydrogen. Alright, I'm going to erase everything on here and we're going to do helium because helium is a really good example of what happens when you don't get bonding at all alright so let's look at helium Now, you know helium only has two electrons. So if I have two e helium atoms, I'm going to have a total of four electrons that could possibly be involved in bonding. So I'm going to draw one of those down here. Here's one helium atom. And you know there's two electrons here. And they're both in a 1s orbital like that. And then I have my second helium atom here. We're going to see if it forms a stable bond with the other one. It also has two electrons. That'll be 1s2. So molecular orbital theory says when you have two atomic orbitals they combine to give you two molecular orbitals. Now I have a total of four electrons. So I'm going to fill in up the center until I run out of electrons. I'm going to use the rules. One up, one down. Opposite spin. I got two more. One up and one down. Now notice here, when you get done with these, look at the molecular orbitals. You have a sigma bonding order orbital that's full and a sigma anti-bonding orbital that is full. Well, just like in math, you know, when you add a positive and a negative number, like positive 1 and negative 1, they cancel out. Well, here these are in opposite phases, you know, and so when you have this happening, they're going to cancel out. And bond order, the bond order process shows that. So if I'm going to calculate the bond order of helium, you know, a helium molecule, I'm going to have two bonding electrons minus two antibonding electrons and that's going to be divided by two 
because that was the that's the formula. So two minus two is zero. And you have zero bonds between helium. You know helium is a noble gas and it doesn't bond with itself. Noble gases don't bond. So this molecular orbital notation or theory explains why they don't bond. It's because you have electrons in this anti-bonding orbital that cancel out, and you know, they're, they cancel out these right here. They're in opposite phases. So let's do one that has some P electrons.